Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. This is tutorial number seven in the series of Beginners Java tutorials. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at getting user input. So I've got my main program here. I've got a, uh, a main method inside a class. And I'm going to use the scanner class to get user input. Um, now, the scanner class looks like this. So you've already seen the string class. Um, this is scanner, and I'm going to create a variable that can refer to a um, an object of type scanner. So I'm going to call it input. So input is um, um, an arbitrary variable name. I could call that um, anything I like. I could call it not if I wanted to. It makes no difference. But I'll call this input, and um, the reason I'm getting an error here at the moment is because I need a statement at the top of the class file that um, imports the scanner class so that uh, my program knows where to find it. And um, I can either type that myself or I can get Eclipse to do it for me. Um, I could click on this icon here and go to import scanner. Or my favorite shortcut, I could go to, I could press control shift and O, and Eclipse will add all necessary imports for me. So I've got this import statement here, which must be the first line in your file, except that you could have a package statement on the first line, but uh, we'll look at that in the future. Okay, so I've got a variable here, but I haven't actually got a scanner object. This doesn't actually refer to anything. So I'm going to type here, new scanner system.in. And don't worry about this syntax if it's new to you um, because we will we will examine it in more detail later on. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new scanner object and I'm passing it the standard predefined system.in input stream object. Um, but for the moment I'd suggest you know just practice typing this. And to get some user input, I, I'm going to get a line to start with, a line of text, and I'm going to store that in a string. So I'll create a variable of type string, and I'll call it line, uh, and again, it could be anything, and I'll say that equals input dot next line. And here I'm going to add a prompt. A prompt is just some text that asks the user to do something. So I'm going to say System.out.println, enter a line of text. And by line, I mean that the user can enter zero, zero or more characters, but um, he or she must then hit the return key. Um, and that's kind of the definition of a line. And once I've got the line, I'm going to say um, sysout, control space, you entered line. So I'm going to tell them what they entered. So at this here, um, I'm just creating the scanner object. Then I'm saying enter a line of text. And then at this point here, um, I'm actually going to wait for them to enter a line. And just to make this clearer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some comments in here. Now you can put a one line comment in Java by typing slash slash and then um, just type some text. So I'll say create scanner object and here I'll say output output the prompt and here I'll say um, wait wait for the user to enter a line of text and then here I'll say tell um, tell them what they entered. So I'll run this program and it says enter a line of text and I can enter anything here. My name is John. You entered. My name is John. Now we're not restricted to getting um, just lines of text with um, scanner. For example, I could get a number. I could say enter an integer, which means a whole number. And I could say, instead of string line, here I'll put to 
wait for the user to enter something. And here, instead of string line, I'll say int um, value. And I'll say input dot next int next int. And if you if you type um, the first few letters of something in Eclipse and press Control Space, you get this autocomplete um, pop up, and you can accept. You can scroll between different defaults with the arrow keys on a mouse, and you can accept um, a suggestion by pressing Enter, which is really handy. But sometimes you need to get rid of extra brackets if you've already typed some. OK, and here I'll say you entered value. And if I run that, enter an integer, 88, you entered 88. Um, this program, um, unfortunately, isn't very robust because if I run it and I enter letters instead of an integer, it will crash. But at least it has crashed in a controlled way by throwing something called an exception, which we'll look at in future. Um, and I can also get a floating point value. I could say enter a enter a floating point value. In other words, um, a fractional value with a decimal point. And I can say double value equals um, input dot next double. And I can say you entered value again. There's a, there's a little complication here um, because if you're in the UK or the USA, for floating point values, you'll be used to typing things like uh, 67, 77.4. But if you are in um, somewhere in Europe outside the UK, um, you will be used to using a comma instead. So you'll say 77, comma 4. And um, I'm using a actually a Dutch version of Windows here. So if I run this program, I have to enter, for example, 5,6. But if you're in the UK or the US, this is going to be 5.6. And then when I hit return, it's actually telling me what I entered in UK, US format. OK, um, that's all for this tutorial, just about. If you want more information on the scanner class, then just type scanner Java into Google and you can look at the API document. And if you want to make your program more robust, um, Scanner has a method that will enable you to see if there is a next double or a next int. And you can use an if statement to get a line if there isn't one waiting. But I will leave that as an exercise for you. And in the next tutorial, we are going to look at do while loops, which is just a variation on the while loop. And until then, happy coding.